replace the pony with Ike in a monkey costume. Wait, what? The aquarium's here. The end party! Hey, rate the photo. Let's grab a quick watching BYU TV on KBYU DT Provo Salt Lake City. Hello once again BYU football fans. Welcome back inside Studio C at the BYU Broadcasting Building for another weekly edition of The Coordinator's Corner presented by JCW's The Burger Boys. It is our final show before a bye week break. Next week, coming up on today's show, we visit with BYU's offensive and special teams coordinators, Jeff Grimes and Ed Lamb, as we review what went down against Washington and look ahead to Toledo. And as always, we invite your questions for the coaches. Use the hashtag CCBYU, and we'll get to your social media questions a little later on in the show. And to open up to today's broadcast, we welcome in second-year offensive coordinator, Jeff Grimes. Hello, Jeff. And uh, BYU falls to Washington 45-19 uh, in Saturday at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. You lose not only a game, we'll have to start with this, unfortunately, but you lose your leading rusher and scorer. Tyson Williams' season is over, sadly, only four games in. Yeah, I feel really bad for, for Ty. He's a great kid. We worked really, really hard to recruit him, sold him on the vision of coming here and being our feature tailback. And, um, you know, he's fought really hard to become that guy and, uh, you know, has, has been working his whole career for this opportunity, has his opportunity, and was doing really well. And then, uh, and then you know, tragedy strikes. That's, that's the nature of, uh, of this game, I suppose, but it doesn't make you feel any better. And um, obviously our team will move forward and we'll miss him, but um, I feel bad for him. There's a team impact, obviously, but you allude to the personal impact. He comes from a, a great distance away to, to try something new and different and, and occupy a new role, and it was working well. Yeah, it was. It worked well for both of us, I think. And, and uh, like I said, I just I love, the <clears throat> I love the kid, and I feel bad for him. Um, but I know he's got the strength and the character that he'll, he'll bounce back, and, and, um, and he'll learn something from it. It may be too soon to even speculate as to what his future might hold athletically right at this point. Yeah, I think so. I think we'll have to give it a few days and, and then we'll cross that bridge. Okay. As for the game itself on Saturday, uh, BYU didn't lead in this one. Huskies score on their first drive and you're kind of playing catch up from the get-go again here. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't pleased with the way that, that we started the game and, and um, just, you know, more, more than anything, it's okay to lose a game. You never want to, but you're going to lose some games. Um, I'm, I'm just pleased with the fact that we didn't give ourselves a chance to win the game. We didn't give ourselves an opportunity to be in the game in the fourth quarter like we have the last two weeks because of the mistakes we led leading up to that. And um, just didn't feel like we played our style of football. Now, you dub had come into the game outscoring opponents 42 nothing in the first quarter. They're great starters, of course. After Saturday, it goes to 63-3 to because they go 21-3 to in the opening quarter. It felt like the quarter could have ended and gone a lot differently, but for it seemed like, like a drop pass kind of flipped things in that, in that first quarter. Yeah, we had, we had a few early errors. We had a couple of drops in the game that we haven't, we haven't had to this point all year. As I've mentioned several times, I've been really happy with our receivers and, and no one more so than Talon and no one who wanted to catch a pass more than him. But um, he didn't come down with that one. And, and obviously that hurt us, as did a couple of other uh, mistakes in, in the early going. And then it was really right after that that this happens. Uh, the yeah. scoop and score comes very quickly thereafter. So that was a pretty big swing, right? You yeah, think they're going in at one end, and then they're going in at the other. Yeah, that was that was a big big momentum shift in the game, obviously, and and a really poor job by us. How did you see this play in particular? Just uh... guy just got beat. One on one yeah. protection got beat. Zach is on Zach's blind side, so you can't really fault him. I think he's about to throw the ball to a receiver that had a chance to come down with it, and. Instead of us being in position to score, they get seven. 
So the drops Saturday were unusual because BYU had had only two through three games. I counted four on Saturday. Maybe the count's a little off, but I had four. So that was, it was an atypical day for the wideouts that way. They'd been, they'd been yeah, playing quite well. I thought so, too. And, and a couple of those you could count as drops because they certainly got their hands on them. But it, they, there are a couple of throws that could have been um, a little bit better placed. And a guy has a chance to catch it and run with it. Um, so I think it was a combination of things. But... Yeah, we, we did not come down with the ball as consistently as we have to this point. And so you hit it earlier. You're trying to stay in the game as opposed to kind of be in the game as you had been. You're down 24-3. Um, but then you did get kind of back in it. 75-yard drive. Uh, Emmanuel Lasupa scored a touchdown. PAT was missed. It's 24-9. Then kind of that rough sequence that comes uh, when, when Tyson's lost to the, to the knee injury late in the second quarter. The possession gets salvaged by that long Jake field goal. 24-12 at halftime. What are you thinking? Well, like you said, we had an opportunity there, I think, to gain some momentum. Then we, that was the series we took the sack in the red zone, right? right. Yeah, really a bad right decision. Right after Tyson went out, right? Yeah, yeah, bad bad decision right there. I thought we were moving the ball, had a chance to, to get another to get a, a seven pointer before the, before the half, and took a bad sack. We did we did salvage it with a long field goal, but we should have gotten more out of it. And then at halftime, when I talked to the guys, I said, look, we've we've made all the mistakes that you can make and and uh, have played pretty, pretty poorly. But it's not like we're just not moving the ball. It wasn't like we felt like we were just um, just being snuffed out by their defense. I think we we just made a lot of mistakes, self-inflicted wounds. And, and I said, OK, we got those out of the way. And now let's come back and let's go score some points the second half. And it felt like in the locker room that the guys were were engaged and ready to go out and do that. But we didn't. Yeah, the scoreboard got out of tilt, but but the stat sheet never really did. It kind of felt like it was, again, a game of mistakes where, where the key or the sudden change plays were the difference makers in this one. Yeah, for sure. And then we come out and, you know, again, we're moving it and then we fumble the ball there in the third quarter and, again, give them momentum, give them a score, and we just, we never could gain hold of the momentum. So they had a big first quarter, UW uh, 21 points, big third quarter, 21 points, um, no scoring in the fourth. The second half saw two turnovers after that first one we saw in the first. So three turnovers on the day. And now we see through four games, Jeff, uh, in, in the two games you win, zero turnovers. The two games you've lost, six. And some might say, well, there, there's your story. You certainly could <laughs> make that case and be done with it. <laughs> but I think there's more for us to learn because there were more mistakes than just the turnovers that, that kept us from being in the game. But certainly nothing more significant than, than giving the football to, to the other team. And, uh, you know, that one there by Zach, you know, he's trying to throw to Aleva. Leva had an outbreaking route and he fell down. And, and um, it was just, it was kind of a microcosm of our day, the way it ended on that play. I'll slip at the end there. And the, and the unusual thing is that of the six turnovers you've had, three are for scores. Uh, half come the other way for defensive touchdowns. And that's, and that's a very uh, uh, atypical number as well. Yeah, hopefully we got those out of the way. <laughs> uh, penalties never a be-all and end-all. They never have been. Uh, BYU had five offensive penalty against UW and, uh, and three false starts. And that matches the total from the first three games. So, again, it was this one game where things kind of just kind of seemed to snowball on you. Yeah, and I don't know why. Um, we've got we've to try to figure that out. But the, the holding call and the illegal man downfield, those are going to happen every now and then. They were, they were close. The, the illegal man downfield, we were right at three yards with Brady on an RPO. And that, that call goes without being called a lot every of times. Saturday yeah, yeah. Um, all over the country. So I'm not, I'm not making a big deal out of that. When the three false starts, though, those are, um, those are silly. We, a, we shouldn't have those. And it's unusual that they're maybe off the ball as much as they were this past week. Yeah, those, those, there's no excuse for that. Uh, all right, uh, break time. As we go to break, a reminder about the BYU football with Kalani Sitake Tuesday at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific on the BYU TV app and Wednesdays at 1 Eastern on BYU TV. More with offensive coordinator Jeff Grimes. Coming up next, you are in the coordinator's corner brought to you by JCW's The Burger Boys. With the BYU license plates, no matter where you are, you show your cougar spirit and you make it possible for students to get an education. The donation you make when you get the license plates goes to support BYU scholarships. So whether spreading cougar pride coast to coast or getting to the big game, you're also funding scholarship opportunities for BYU students. Learn about free special plates today at alumni.byu.edu slash plates. 
Dexter & Dexter is a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services. Since 1995, we have helped more than 20,000 Utahns both to navigate life's challenges and to make the most of life's opportunities. From auto accidents to criminal defense and from bankruptcy to family law, we are passionate about shouldering your burdens. To learn more about scheduling a no-obligation consultation, visit DexterLaw.com. This is Battle of the Ages. <laughs> Two families are going to battle it out in fun and intense games for a chance to win $10,000. Ta-da! Your job is to smack the correct <laughs> fact. Yes, you are correct. You just made an extra thousand bucks in 15 seconds. Nicely done. Oh, oh, hey, it's me, Kirby. My mission, join Homeworks of America. I have changed light bulbs at my house. Two, I would like to meet Joe and Chris. Three, I want to help fix somebody's home. All right. Good job, buddy. Four, I want to lead a construction crew. Five, is I want to keep all my digits. Oh, nailed it. Emmanuel Asupa is now the pistol back. Zach claps the hands, gives to Soup. Soup middle, surging for the plane, and touchdown is the signal. Emmanuel Asupa for the first time as a Cougar. All right, so we are back on the coordinator's corner visiting with offensive coordinator Jeff Grimes. Cook's coming off that 45-19 home loss to Washington on Saturday. We saw it on the clip there. A little more pistol this past week for you guys formation-wise. Yeah, a little bit. It's something that we've, we've said since the beginning. We wanted to be able to do everything from the offset position and a pistol. It offers some advantages. There are some disadvantages to it, but we felt like it would be a good, uh, a good part of our game plan in this past Saturday, yeah. Well, maybe uh, the rest is window dressing. Points are always the name of the game, I think, in this. And, and BYU's now uh, lost 15 in a row when they don't get uh, at least 21. And that's a good number to hit for. You want to be higher than that. And BYU loses at 19. Scoring, it seems, around the game of college football has just kind of exploded recently. And if you're in the teens, it seems like it's just a tough, it's a tough grind. Yeah, there's no question about that. The game's gotten faster. And with the advent of a number of things on offense and the way the game's being played now, you've got to score to win, I think. And, and um and we, we certainly need to do better. Taking stock of the BYU offense as a whole, best numbers right now come in red zone scoring. Your number's pretty high right there. You might like the touchdown number to be higher, as it was last year, which you yeah. really were, were proud of last season, right? Yeah, for sure. We have not, we have not done as well with our per touchdown percentage down there. A couple of games, um, just a couple of, a couple of mistakes down there that, that I think we could have controlled and, and not to take anything away from the teams we've played against. We've played against, I think, four talented defenses. Um, However, as you look at the games, and this Saturday was no exception, we didn't do the things that we could do to give us a chance to put points on the board all the time. So we, we can certainly do better there. I know you appreciate uh, what Jay Goldroyd, though, was able to do. Uh, if a drive does uh, bog down, he's going to get any points, and that, that's important. Been, yeah, yeah, I'm really proud of that kid. He's got, he's got a winner's mentality, and, and uh, he gives us a lot of confidence. I feel like the elephant in the room is schedule strength. Um, it ranks 10th right now in Sagarin. You talked about it. Uh, no one's played BYU schedule right now with three ranked teams and four straight P5s. If the offensive numbers aren't where you want them to be overall, how much of it, though, is really a function of the schedule? And how, how much do you have to look at that and say, but it's going to get easier or it's going to get better? Well, that's, that's for someone else to say. That's for you to say. That's for, um, I don't know, maybe somebody who's in charge of the schedule to say, my job is to figure out how to get our guys in position to score points. And so, Is it a real thing, though? Um, well, sure it is. It's a real thing when you play good teams and, and you have to account for the fact that Washington's a good defense. They've been, I think they've been the top defense in the Pac-12 for a while now. Four straight years. Yeah, yeah. so... Um, Again, my frustration is not that we lost the game. My frustration is that we didn't play as well as we could have played. If we play our style of game and we don't turn the football over, or maybe you have one of those, one of those interceptions like happened at the end because a receiver fell down, you, you can live with that. You can live with a couple of penalties, but not three false starts. And so my focus is on doing the things that I know we can control and being a more disciplined, hard-nosed team than we were on Saturday. And if we do that, then we'll we'll have an opportunity to, to, to win against anybody. Or even when we play a talented team like Washington, maybe we don't always right. win, but it's a game in the fourth quarter.
So whether it's Utah or Washington, it's not so much that you lost, it's maybe how you lost each exactly. of those games. Exactly. Gotcha. Uh, BYU's third down numbers, uh, kind of a mixed bag right now. Third and long uh, is never good for anybody. Third and medium is exceptional for you guys right now. That's been a good spot for you. It has been, and I, and I think a lot of that has to do with our quarterback play. Zach's done a good job making decisions there for the most part. Uh, third and long is what it is. It's the most yeah. challenging situation in all of football. We need to be better on third and short. We look at it as third and one, two, and three in those situations. We need to be much better than we have been this season and and um, that'll be a point of emphasis moving forward yeah what do you do about that though because it's normally a pretty high percentage situation third and hasn't been yet this year what are you kind of seeing maybe as commonalities or things that yeah we can we can fix that well I think there are a couple things that I can do as a play caller and and uh, maybe um, put ourselves in position to do some things other than what we have done um, and then the other the the other part of the accountability falls on the players when mm -hmm. When we call this play and we got to make a yard, then you got to block the man in front of you. And we have not done that consistently well enough. I would say it comes down to, to blocking more so than any, any other thing while we have not been able to be consistent there. Your best third down runner has been Tyson Williams. Now you have to go a different direction. Emmanuel Asupa uh, was obviously getting most of the reps when, he, uh, when Tyson went out. What kind of a load do you think Soup's going to carry you moving, moving forward? Uh, how does your backfield shape up and third down or otherwise? Yeah, well, I think I think Soup's a talented player. Obviously, we thought that or we wouldn't have brought him here. Certainly now, in retrospect, glad that we have both of those guys <laughs> as well as Pini and, and Sione. Um, I think we still got some talented players there. I'm glad that Soup had the day that he did on Saturday. I think that gives him a little a little momentum moving forward. And uh, now all, all of those guys um, will carry... Um, a larger portion of the load and that's a great opportunity for them again a disappointment for for Ty but with each of those opportunities or with each of those tragedies like that it's an opportunity for someone else what are Emmanuel's the strongest characteristics that will fit into your game plan I think he's got a great combination of of speed and power you know a guy that with his with his size and um, and his speed I think he's a load you saw Saturday when he stuck his foot in the ground and went north and south He's a guy that can run through arm tackles and be a physical slicing runner. And so um, we'll play to those strengths. Okay. And Lopini Cato, you, you, you mentioned him already, still in the mix, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. And he's, and he's a great guy and has done a lot of things behind the scenes this year that a lot of people wouldn't notice in, in blocking and pass protection, route running. And, and he'll be an even bigger part of our season moving ahead. Uh, Matt Bushman had a one-target day against USC, came back with a nine-target day against Washington, and moved up farther into BYU's career, uh, top tens in, in tight end catches and receiving yards. He ends up with six for 89 uh, and his first score of the season as well. An unusual score, but a a score nonetheless. <laughs> um, but he, uh, you know, Matt, Matt is a um, is a matchup problem for defenses. Yeah. And, you know, at times, on and teams have been doing a a lot of work to try to take him away. We've seen double coverage. We've seen man coverage. We saw some more on Saturday. And and one thing we saw Saturday is when they tried to, to man him up, there are times that even if he doesn't make the catch, um, he can be a guy that, that can give you a, a penalty down Draws the field. A penalty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I, I was glad to see him uh, have a little better day than, than what we've been able to do. And we did some specific things to try and, to try and get him open, and, and he responded. Is it going to be a week-to-week -week thing with Moroni right now in terms of how he's uh, able to, to contribute? I hope not. <laughs> Did you get any, I, I didn't notice him in it on Saturday. Did he get any reps on, on Saturday? Didn't... No, he, was, he wasn't yeah. physically ready Saturday, but I think yeah. he will be in the next week or two. That's a hope. Uh, possession time is, again, sort of like penalties, not really the best single indicator of anything. If you're an explosive offense, you don't need to win possession time. You can be really good that way. But if you have, your defense is having a hard time getting off the field, let's say, um, it, it can become a number that, that concerns you a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, and there were times on Saturday where I felt like tempo could have given us an advantage, and, and you saw that a little bit in the second half, but then there were moments when I felt like I needed to to slow down a little bit more um, just because the score was climbing, the disparity was climbing, and I didn't want to put our, I didn't want to risk putting our defense back out on the field too quickly. Um, so it, it, it impacted um, how we called the game a little bit on Saturday. Um, I, I felt like in the USC game, we were in a different place in the second half, and we could, we could mash the pedal down a little bit better, and, and I, I'm hoping we'll be in that position again a lot more. And with that 3 for 13 on third downs, a much lower number than normal, and that would have kept you on there a little while too. Absolutely. Just, yeah. you, you, you can't win many games if you can't um, be at least at 40% on third down. 
Let's get to a highlight player from Saturday and somebody who wins the honor for you, offensive player of the game for a second time here in four games, and that's your starting left tackle. Yeah, Brady played really well again, and he is really coming into his own, in my opinion, as, as one of the best players, not only on our team, but but um, maybe in the country. I, I, don't, I don't know. It's too early to say that, maybe, but he's playing at a different level than, um, than, than a lot of players um, mm -hmm. on our team as well as other places. He's just become incredibly consistent with his technique. Coach Mateos has done a great job in his teaching, and um, he's just become, I think, one of, the, one of the best players on our team and really proud with where he's headed. What's his personality, uh, both off the field and on the field, like? Um, a little bit goofy. Um, sometimes I say he's kind of like a ditzy blonde. <laughs> um, but when it's, uh, when it's time to strap that helmet up and, and go to work, um, he does it every day in practice as well. And I think that's one of the reasons he's playing so well on Saturdays. Okay. And as a group, how would you say the O-line has come together through, through four games? You know, I felt like they were making progress, but I didn't think we played real well on Saturday, particularly on the interior. They had some really good defensive tackles, and that was a concern of ours going into the game. And I felt like their defensive tackles won the battle with our interior line on, uh, on Saturday. And so um, not, not a great showing for our line this past Saturday, but I believe in those guys, and I know they'll work hard and come back stronger. Okay, and uh, Coach Mateos, you, you, you noted him just a moment ago. Uh, did it, how long did it take till he felt like part of the group and the group felt like he was one of them when you brought him in? I don't think long at all. He's got such, um, such an engaging personality. I really felt like he did a great job, not only with our players, but with our offensive staff as well. And so he's doing a great job. He's working really hard and, and, uh, and really, really bears a lot of the... Um, of the burden when we lose and <laughs> and um, and and doesn't look to take a lot of the credit when we when we win but in fact a lot of it comes down to how your front plays and like I said I thought that was an, a major impact in the game Saturday okay. break time once again and a reminder that dinner after the game at JCW's includes something for everybody from burgers to wings shakes to salads JCW's quality and a lot of it in Lehigh American Fork Provo South Jordan and now open in Harriman coming up Saturday it's BYU at Toledo BYU radio coverage begins with Cougar pregame live at 10 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Mountain. The kick at noon Eastern, 10 a.m. Mountain on BYU radio. Coming up next, your questions for offensive coordinator Jeff Grimes and a preview of BYU's trip to Toledo. You're in the coordinator's corner brought to you by JCW's The Burger Boys. Back with more right after this here in Studio C. I want to make desserts that are so good that someone comes in and if they're having a bad day, it's chocolate therapy. It's difficult to make a dessert shop profitable. <laughs> the business side and the vision side have to go hand in hand or the vision dies. So Deseret First helped me when I needed to attain additional financial capital. I actually really do trust that they want me to succeed. My name is LaDonia Jones and my why is I want to be a day changer. Son, my father gave this to me when I made the team and now it's yours. Oh no, Dad, I'm not on the team. I just got this at the store. We're so excited. We just bought front row tickets for all of your games. What? They were expensive, but anything to support our boy. Support me in what? I'm not on the team. You should know. We paid for the tickets with your college fund. Well, since you're on athletic scholarship now. Gear so legit, they'll think you're on the team. BYU Store. I'm James Maslow. I'm Keaton Simons. I'm Jaleel White. That's my stepdad, Eric Roberts. I'm not getting any younger, James. I hear you, Pops, which is why I've set aside seven days. Time for her to explore her adventurous side. I'll know everything about it, and he'll know nothing about it. Ah! I just want to get out of here. Mom, are you ready? Ah! Oh, Mama. Whoa, look at this shark. Jump! 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 Yeah, I don't want to do that. Yeah, you need to stop! <laughs> I'm so proud of you. He scared me senseless almost all week, but I loved every minute of it. Getting to do them with my mom is creating such amazing memories. I'm learning a lot more about my mom. I didn't realize how fun she used to hang out with. Do it again? Okay. <laughs> Corner is brought to you in part by JCW's The Burger Boys.
Bailey's Moving and Storage. More than just a move. Siegfried and Jensen, serving Utah families for over 25 years. You're in the coordinator's corner, brought to you by JCW's The Burger Boys. Final segment now with offensive coordinator Jeff Grimes as BYU gets set to travel back to the Eastern time zone. It's a noon local time kick at the Toledo Rockets. UT 2-1 and one after a 41-35 win at CSU on Saturday night in a game that lasted, I kid you not, four hours and 14 minutes with no overtime. What's a game doing four hours and 14 minutes in regulation, Coach Grimes? <laughs> I'm not sure how that happened because <laughs> there were a lot of runs and I yeah. don't know. So Toledo ran 61 plays. Now CSU ran 90, mind you, and there was review after. It seems like reviews are like just, that's a part of the game now. That's just going to count on an extra 10 or 15 minutes because they're going to look at a lot of stuff. Yeah, it is happening more and more. And um, I don't like how it breaks the rhythm of the game, but if it's our call and I want to get it right, then and it works then, for you. Then. That's right. I want to get it right. But it was a crazy one Saturday and the one that Toledo wins. Um, Toledo really, really tremendous uh, run game. They're on their offense. Not much of a pass game. That's how they'll go. On defense, they're pretty generous right now. Uh, the Rockets defense ranks 119th in yards per game allowed, 106th in yards per play allowed. Now, they tend to outperform that on the scoreboard because their scoring defense is in the 50s, so they tend to do a better job or tighten down. What do you see right now? Yeah, which is the most important thing, yeah. right? I mean, I've been on a part of a number of teams in the past where they gave up yards but didn't give up points, and, and that's the name of the game is can you score points or not. I think they're a well-coached bunch. Obviously, I've only had the opportunity to watch them a little bit to this point, but what I have seen, I think they're well coached. I think they have a solid defensive philosophy, and I think they, I think they do a pretty good job of of keeping people from from scoring. So, I'm ex I, I'm just excited about another opportunity for us to play, and that's what it's really about at this point. It's about us. It's the first non P5 game of the season for BYU. Uh, Toledo's gone P5, FCS, and G5. So they've kind of mixed it up a little bit, and we'll see how things shake up when BYU drops uh, to you know, uh, I guess you'd say. Uh, the next classification of, uh, of teams from P5 to G5, but there's no looking past a team like Toledo. They're playing on their home field. They're a good program picked to win their, their division in the MAC. It's just more yeah, football. I think that, yeah, it's just more football. That's right. Yeah. And if you love the game, you love showing up. I mean, we only, we're only guaranteed 12 opportunities, hopefully 13 um, Saturdays to play when you play this sport. And uh, you need to make the most of those. And so I think we'll do that. And I think the challenge for us this week is to make this game mean just as much as the last game or the USC game and, or, or the Tennessee game. I think this game needs to be just as important as any of the others have. And, and if we don't do that, um, then, then we're failing in the way that we approach this game of football. To social media with hashtag, BYU, uh, hashtag CC, BYU for Coach Grimes uh, from Lauren Parker. It says, not a question, really, just to tell Coach Grimes I love the quarterback sneak by Zach Wilson on fourth and one great short yardage play. Yeah, it's a challenge to be a quarterback, a good quarterback sneak team when you're a shotgun team. Um, you can catch people on it every now and then, but it, but it is a challenge because when they know you're going to sneak it, then... Um, then they can play certain defenses that make that more challenging. But we hadn't done it yet, so I felt like that was a good time for it. So if you're all shotgun, under center is pretty an, an obvious tell, I guess, and then it's just a matter of man-on-man yeah, man at that yeah. point. Yeah, and but. you can do some other things to offset that, but how much time you want to invest in that is something that's detracting from another piece of your offense somewhere. But that said, it's a good play for everyone to feel like that's, uh, that, that's a physical challenge met. Yeah, right? yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, good luck this weekend at Toledo. Another Eastern time zone game. There will be a few more of these, as we know. And uh, we'll see you here, and not next week, and not even the week after that, but in three weeks. Okay? I'll miss it. Yeah, I hope you do a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> BYU TV will get you set for BYU and Toledo this Saturday from the Glass Bowl. Watch Countdown to Kickoff Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. The game on ESPN Plus and BYU Radio with BYU TV returning for postgame coverage afterwards. Coming up next, special teams coordinator and assistant head coach Ed Lamb joining us in the coordinator's corner live from Studio C on BYU TV. Back with more right after this. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001.
This is my husband, Raymond Campbell. This is Nicole Campbell. She's the best mother that I know. She is beautiful, as you can see, and she's funny. There was a situation with my biological dad kind of felt like he was being trapped. It was okay to have one child. The second child, which was me, was not an okay thing. So we left my mother. She had to make a choice to give one child everything or split everything between two children. And I was chosen to go. That's all I really know about my adoption. I always wanted to know more. It was anger, man. It wasn't, it wasn't, and I tried to not care, but I do. I always have cared. Literally, it was just like, you know, I gotta do something. If he can meet somebody that can come in his face and say, it was me and it was a decision that I made, I just think an explanation and a hug can just solve it. Welcome back inside the Coordinator's Corner, brought to you by JCW's The Burger Boys. We are kicking off the second half hour of our show by welcoming in BYU's special teams coordinator, linebackers coach, and assistant head coach, Ed Lamb. Good morning, Ed. Good morning. So, uh, tough one Saturday versus UW. Uh, Huskies went up 45-19, and, and the news of the day was losing Tyson Williams, as he announced yesterday, with the ACL loss for the year. And he was going to be a special player for you guys this year. He was. He, he already was a uh, tremendous player for us. The thing that impressed me most about him was how he became a leader in a short period of time. Came in in the summertime and, and uh, very quickly ingratiated himself to his teammates with his work ethic and his attitude. And uh, so it hurt, hurts on a personal level, on a, you know, on a team level. I'm sure there are guys that are, are excited about their opportunity to try to live up to the uh, standards that he set. For someone who wasn't uh, from these parts or, or, or playing ball in this part of the country and coming far away to play, uh, you talked about ingratiating. Uh, did he? Did, was it pretty quick transition for him? And and how much do you think he he ended up liking the BYU experience? Uh, I think he loved it. I think he found what he was hoping to find, and uh, that's that's something we need to really keep in mind as a coaching staff and as a university. Is he came here? He's a he's a godly man. Uh, he appreciated the atmosphere that he found here. Um, a lot less peer pressure to be involved in the wrong things. A lot of our players really stand for things of substance when it comes to the way they live their lives and I think he he really has enjoyed that and I think he will continue to well we don't know what's next but uh, we wish all the best for Tyson um, as he looks forward uh, to the game itself on Saturday uh, UW ends up if you look at it last year and this year uh, they won the two games by a combined score of 80 to 26 uh, so I'd say not much separated last year's Husky team and this year's. that's a good group yeah and, and two scores two different years um, where we were dominated in all three phases and that that's really been uh, that's really been the issue you know it's it's not necessarily that uh, you know some sometimes we come out of a game with a narrow margin of of defeat and and you can point to one side of the ball that had they just picked it up a little more and balanced out the attack then we'd be in good shape but uh, really everyone shares in this loss completely unacceptable result offense defense kicking game uh, coaching player motivation etc found out before the game, UW game, that uh, their running back, lead running back, Savon Ahmed, would not play due to injury. They didn't really miss a beat. Uh, they had a 100-yard runner, another back with 80. Stopping the run has been really the challenge in this, and it's been a tough month, mind you, schedule-wise, but it's been a challenge for BYU here in this first month. It has, yeah, and it, we, as coaches, we've got to separate out, you know, when, when we've been willing to, um, to give up the run. You know, the examples like, a, you know, Utah had ripped off a 50-yard run in a, in a two-minute situation and we were playing a softer level of defense. So some of that is, uh, you know, when we look at statistics, we're really looking for... Situational? More situational. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it, if we're speaking with a broad brush here, general terms, we have to get much, much better at uh, stopping the run. It's been a historical strength, though. Of these teams the last few seasons have been yards per carry uh, allowed, and it's been a strong uh, suit for BYU of late, so that's unusual. It will continue to be. Yeah, we, we, will, we will solidify in the run defense. Uh, we will play better run defense. We will make that... Uh, a point of emphasis for from the coaching staff the play, through to the players and they'll respond to the challenge and we will be a better run defense team. Well, most teams would love to be also uh, the front runner in any game and BYU's got a great record when playing from in front as a lot of teams do. But uh, BYU's led after the first quarter just once in four games and have yet to lead at halftime or after three quarters in any game. We know you guys can come back and that's a great thing, but it would be nice to kind of play with a bit of a lead and see how your guys respond. That would be, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not, well, it's not something we really... Uh, 
you know, I mean, to plan against. You know, we're, we're obviously every team trying, wants to be we're, in front. We're trying to yes. build that lead. Yes. But uh, right now, right now, I think we have had uh, in two games we've had a tough-minded team that played regardless of score, and then in two games I thought we faltered, maybe in different ways. Um, I think in the first game against Utah, we faltered with some run defense late and uh, with motivation. I thought particularly defensively uh, this, this past game, um, we actually solidified against the run late, brought some young guys in that played really well and played with a lot of spirit and heart regardless of score. We didn't have much chance of coming back at, at that point that I'm alluding to, but you know, got a couple turnovers late and played better run defense late. And, and so uh, you know, hopefully we can just, we can every game, win or lose, take what's there to be learned, apply it to the next game. And, uh, and in this case, we have to get much, much better. Turnovers again, if not the determining factor, a contributing factor on Saturday. Uh, just the one giveaway in the first half, but it ends up being a scoop and score that really flips the, the script. It felt like it was going a certain way, and then, bang, it's, it's going a different direction. Yeah, that's that, uh, that and the punt uh, uh, re allowed for a touchdown, the punt return for a touchdown they had. Uh, those two things are really backbreakers. It can, it can really steal the heart of a defense, and uh, I thought that, that was the case. And we were reeling a little bit when both of those things occurred, didn't respond well. And then uh, you know, that just the beginning of that third quarter took, I, I thought what we had um, coming out of halftime was a motivated team who had mounted a little bit of a comeback, made it an interesting game. We had every opportunity there in the third quarter and uh, just completely blew up on us. Yeah, on that first rally, you were down 24 to three. A touchdown makes it 24-9. Uh, missed PAT stays 24-9. That's the first, by the way, he's ever missed in his BYU career, PAT. He'd make amends at the end of the half on that career-long 54-yard field goal. So BYU's lengthy overall and home droughts without that 50-yard field goal, they finally come to an end, so we don't get to talk about that anymore. 54 yards from, from Jake, and it's 24-12, and it's a different feel at that point. It was, and we were getting the ball in the second half, and all these things were discussed with the players at halftime. Hey, not the way we want to start, not the way we want to play, but way to hang in there and fight. And uh, we start with the ball in the second half, and, and you know, from there we had, I think, uh, five straight. When I use the word series, what I'm talking about is from offense to defense to, to special, or from offense to special teams to defense to special teams. And usually if you can just get two out of three of those, then you're competing, and, and one out of three. But if you go 0 for 3, mm -hmm where you have a poor offensive showing, a poor special team showing, a poor defensive showing, and, and, and that happened about five or six times in a row in the exchange. Jake Oldroyd, uh, who we just saw there a moment ago, by the way, the only FBS kicker right now in the nation with 10 field goals. No one else is at double digits. He's 10 for 11 on the year, 13 for 15 for his career. He's clearly going to be a part of the offensive arsenal here moving forward in, in his career. He has, and it's changed the way we discuss um, offense moving, in, moving into the opponent's uh, territory. He's done a he's done a fantastic job with that. In fact, uh, you know, the, Danny Jones really has done such a good job of pinning opponents inside the 20 yard line. Really, the conversations are just much different than we've had. We feel good about what Danny's been able to do as a punter in that area. Feel great about Jake's ability to hit from long range. Feel great about our offensive uh, ability to to convert third and fourth downs in there. And so, really feel like that's a positive for us. We had a turnover in that area this last game that that obviously didn't didn't uh, bode well for the outcome of the game, but feel really positive about where our team is at. Uh, by the way, you've seen that 54-yarder live and on video. Uh, from how many yards would it have been good, do you think, that kick? <laughs> uh, hypothetical? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it, it looked to have at least five yards to me. I'd... Yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe more. Maybe, maybe touch 60. I mean, more than five. Yeah, it's, uh, he's, I mean, clearly, when he hits that, there's there's going to be an audible thump, right? Like that, he, he, that actually is the first angle I've seen from the from the uh, back line there. Yeah, I would say five five plus yards, maybe maybe eight or ten. Does it sound different when he kicks it? It is does. It? Yeah, yeah. He and Skyler actually both have a really good uh, pop off off the football. These are these are two of the more powerful kickers that I've been around, and and Jake's just uh, you know had a slight edge in accuracy, and then so that that makes him number one. And Everybody on our team is in a battle for, for playing time and position, but they've, they've both got a really a lot of pop in their leg. Uh, back to the game for a second. Uh, it was a 12-point game at halftime, and, and then they put it out of reach with that 21-point uh, third quarter. And, and among the touchdown score was the 88-yard punt return score by Aaron Fuller. He's a good returner, but the way you looked at it, what did you see? Well, he's, he's a good returner, but we didn't give ourselves a chance. We had uh, two uh, assignment breakdowns, which is really rare for our, for our punt uh, uh, return unit right here. We had, uh, we, it's a pretty good job by Bo Tanner to get down there early, and he gets it going flat. At this point right here, as we're speaking, the returner had ran about 20 yards to gain about three, and, and then we, we had two players responsible for contain that 
that just chose to, to run straight at the returner, basically run to the boundary instead of running uh, with some width and some, some leverage and some angle. And so this pursuit, the guys are working so hard in pursuit, but nobody was able to even slow him down. And then at that point, it gets to some of the big guys and the, and the punter who you know, they are just not suited to tackling the open field like that against such a skilled player. Uh, one more Husky touchdown, then a scoreless fourth quarter, and BYU falls a 45 to 19. Uh, the 45 points tie for the most allowed in a loss during the Kalani Sitake era. And the 19 points, as we talked about with Coach Grimes, these days anyone in the teens is probably not going to be in good shape at the end of it, the way college football is these days. Yeah, that, that's true. I, I think um, you know we we it, it, points allowed right now on defense is nowhere near where it should be. But uh, giving up a giving up a touchdown on offense and a touchdown on special teams, that's just kind of adding fuel to the dumpster fire, you know, and just makes it look a, a lot worse than it is. Offensively, defensively, kicking game, I feel very good about who we are. I feel awful about the way that we played. And to a note that uh, Coach Grimes discussed in the, in the first segment uh, of the show, it's not so much losses. You'll lose games, that those happen. It is, it's how you get there. And whether it was the first game or the fourth game, I think BYU looks at both and say, uh, it's one thing if you, if you lose a tight one or if you're in it to the end, but BYU really wasn't in either case. We weren't, and and you know the season needs to be played out. I think in college football, there's often these huge overreactions. You can, I think it, I'm sure there's some exceptions, but for the most part, you could look at any uh, NFL divisional winner or Super Bowl champion, and there's there's a time when they lost by 20 points and and gave up 40 something points at some point during the season. It's whether or not that defines our team. And I thought that uh, you know again, you know when when teams get scores on defense against us, it sometimes skews the skews the game. And I think in the first game that that outcome was kind of understood by our players of, hey, if we clean that up, I think we're we've got a more competitive game. This one turned into a blowout um, with with a couple of scores given up, like I said, special teams and and offense. but it 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 doesn't need to define our team. And that'll be our challenge as coaches is to to point out the deficiencies, point out where we need to get better, but also make sure that that we understand that we have a team that's capable of winning football games and it's our therefore it's our job it's, it's it's our imperative to get it done next chance to win comes saturday at toledo when we come back coach lamb on his linebackers and we recognize special teams and defensive players of the game from last week against washington we're in studio c this is the coordinator's corner on byu tv back with more after this they prefer to be bringing the heat getting set for success demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Luxurious blanket. Getting cozy with family and friends. A gift for everyone. Minky Couture, official luxury blanket of BYU Athletics. It all started with a princess. Oh, Royal Highness Princess Greta! She is far from a damsel in distress, but she still needed a champion to awaken her from the spell. This is the champion we've been waiting for. The champion she got was less of a knight and more of a... Sir Dwight. Call me Dwight. I'm Dwight. Hi. But he managed to stay alive and even sometimes be helpful through a series of adventures. He's just a cute little... Puppy dog? But when Sir Aldred, a real knight, showed up... Sir Aldred of Westfold, at your service. The princess thought he had what it took to be her champion. Sir Aldred of Westfold, you are the champion of my choice. But is he as trustworthy and noble as he seems? Where is the villain? Who is this guy? Find out on season two of Dwight in Shining Armor. Play fake, five-step drop. 
Eason fires, intercepted by BYU, deflected by Austin Lee, picked off on the near sideline by Max Tooley, Tooley 10, Tooley 5, and he gives it up inside the 5, Washington football just outside the goal line. Max Tooley's knee was down when he lost control of the ball, so it is BYU football at the 7-yard line. Coordinator's Corner continues as we visit with special teams coordinator, linebackers coach, and assistant head coach Ed Lamb. BYU coming off a 45-19 home loss to Washington. It was another game with multiple takeaways for the BYU defense and a third straight game with a linebacker interception. Saturday it was Max Tooley who almost took it to the house, almost lost it too, but on review gets it back, and uh, backers are playing well. Um, yeah, in, in certain spots, we're playing really well. I love the effort and, and the attention those guys are putting in, studying the game in, in the week of preparation. That interception, I think, was really set up. We had a, a, a pretty good four-man pass rush there, and the quarterback felt uh, felt like the pocket was constricting, and then Austin Lee was able to use that to make a great read on it and stepped in front of and he actually had the ball first, bounced off his chest, and Max did a good job of rallying back. Now, the Thule interception was the lone INT for uh, UW's quarterback, Jacob Eason. He went 24 for 28, 293 scores between Browning last year and Eason this year. Man, those Washington quarterbacks were 47 for 53 for 570 and four scores, just the one sack. As for Eason himself, that's a really good quarterback there they got out of Georgia, or from Washington to Georgia and back to them. He, he was fantastic. You know, the year before, we left a lot of guys but naked in coverage and, and uh, those were pretty easy completions. A lot of this guy's completions, uh, this is not one of them, were ripped right through fingertips. He did. He just uh, has a tremendous arm. Um, that one right there, Tyler Algier, uh, was about an inch away from having a finger on that. And he did that over and over against us. He's just a, a tremendous quarterback with a rocket arm. There's another one. I don't know of many quarterbacks that could get that in there before. Like an NFL throw to me. Yeah, all of his throws were in it. There's a, Another one right there where the, the coverage was just a little too far outside leveraged and, and not only did he hit him, but hit him in stride and allowed him to take it in for the touchdown. I give him a ton of credit and, and a, an absolutely unacceptable uh, effort by our guys, uh, defensive coaching staff and defensive players. We can do better than that and we should have. Turnovers uh, among the early season stories for BYU. Uh, zero giveaways in the two wins, six turnovers in the two losses. It's more than just that, but clearly, uh, if you're looking for things that you can uh, ID, those are pretty easy, I guess, right? They are, and and you know, I, as you know, I, the bulk of my time is spent with defensive coaches and defensive players, and so we we call those takeaways. And and, and you know, and from our perspective, you give Washington credit for taking the ball away, and give uh, you know, the other loss you alluded to, the Utah loss, give Utah credit for taking the ball away. And we need to do a better job of that to keep our team in games, is take the ball away from our opponent. We hit on uh, on rushing defense a little bit in the last segment, and you're kind of overseeing a lot of, of the entire team. It seems like both sides of the ball right now, the rush game isn't where it needs to be, maybe will be by the end of the season, hopefully. Yes, it will. I'll, I'll say that. We, we will improve, and we will get better. We will win games with, with rush defense and rushing offense. And, uh, and, and it's such a point of emphasis moving forward that uh, if, if we have to, at the detriment of our pass defense and at the detriment of our passing game, we will get those things going on offense and defense. We'll talk a bit more about Toledo in the next segment, but they'll give you the opportunity uh, to improve really in both areas because uh, that, that's, uh, that's something where they either run the ball well and or give up a lot of yards rushing and BYU gets an opportunity uh, Saturday. But um, whether it's on the ground or elsewhere, um, let's hit the schedule component right now. How much of the current struggles, if there are struggles, are P5 schedule related? The fact that it's been three ranked teams, four P5s, back to back to back to back, and that it might skew maybe perception in one way or another. Yeah, I, I don't think I would be able to answer that fairly right now. I think maybe at the end of the season, looking back at, on a, as a whole, I might be able to answer that better. But my job as a coach is to get our players ready to play whatever the opponent is on the schedule. And so I don't think I could look back on with a, you know after a day or, or a couple of weeks and and say whether our uh, whether it was the matchups. You know my my job is to get our players ready to play any opponent, no matter how strong they are. And and uh, in, in our opinion, Toledo is is uh, power five ability and power five talent, and we need to prepare for them in the same way. Is there a physical um, attrition component that you have to acknowledge if, if the schedule is what it is for BYU, say, in the first month, though, from just a standpoint of bodies? 
You know, I think, I think um, again, from the position, Tough to say from this from perspective. The position that I'm currently in, yeah, exactly. It's nothing to we, acknowledge, really. We've got our roster, and they've got their roster, and we're expected to win. BYU has won a national championship. BYU has beaten Power 5 teams since the times before I was a player here 20-something years ago. And, uh, and to do it with more regularity and, and expect to do it, that's the job we've been tasked with. And, and that's the job that I was excited about on day one when I got here as a coach. And it's the job I'm still excited about. Unacceptable result last week. And so by the same token, looking forward, you, you really can't say, okay, well, that, that one part of the schedule is done. Now we get the more manageable part of the schedule. <laughs> you know, a few years ago, one, one of the young coaches on our staff after we got through that push portion of our schedule, I, I heard him say in the locker room, hey, we won't play another team like that now. And, um, and, and, and that upset me. And I, and I talked to that coach at that time, and, and we, you know, we made sure that the team understood. But, but uh, little, little comments like that from, um, from within our team. We, we, fans, media, they, they should have the perspective that they have, and that's, that's their right to judge and, and make judgments. But you know, we've got to understand now that if, if our guys get excited about playing P5 because it's this moniker that, that we don't have access to, well, you better believe that Toledo's excited about BYU coming to their home. And uh, they're, we're, they're gonna get, well, we're gonna get their best shot. And so we just better treat each team as capable and we better treat ourselves as capable of winning any game if we play well and losing any game if we play poorly. And yes, all you have to do is look from here to the end of November at each game on the schedule, and you can come up with any number of reasons why the challenge that week will be as formidable as any challenge you've already faced, um, even though the P5 moniker may not be there. That's right. Our job is, is to play well in every game and win. It's both, it's both of those things. <laughs> Max Tooley and Peyton Wilgar, I want to hit those two guys really quickly. Uh, as you are, they're, they're a couple of your linebackers. I think they've been bright spots in your linebacker core where depth has been needed. Uh, you've been banged up a little bit. A lot of guys, a lot of guys have had to play. Uh, what would you say about these two in particular since they've been getting maybe most of the reps of maybe the uh, maybe underrated uh, guys to begin the year, if you want to call them that? Oh, I'm so excited about these guys and their future, the way they prepare. A lot of... A lot of credit for their preparation has to go to the veteran guys. I mean, even Zane, Zane is out of our, you know, room right now on a regular basis, hurt. But uh, Isaiah Kalfusi as well. Like they're they're really the way they approach is so professional and businesslike, and the way they study the game. And these guys have seen that from them, and that's allowed them to rise to the occasion with their natural abilities. They do it two different ways. Peyton is a physical specimen. He's he's big. He's fast. Uh, Max plays the game with just so much passion. I mean that his mistake of trying to reach the ball across the five yard line, you know, in his mind, he believed that he was going to leap into the end zone from <laughs> 10 yards. I mean, that would have been a world record long jump, but in his mind, he thinks he can do that. And obviously more experience and understanding space is gonna be helpful to him. But uh, well, what, a, what a passion that he brings to our defensive unit. Love the way he plays. Let's uh, lead us into then uh, defensive and special teams players. We'll start with special teams first. Um, who did you like to ID on the uh, Washington game for special teams? Well, I, I really like the way Skylar Southam kept uh, their, their kickoff return game from, from getting going. It, we, don't, uh, we don't design touchbacks. We don't uh, request touchbacks, but he was getting a good leg on the ball, and we got some touchbacks. Also, he had a few that were he got great hang time, and I thought we dared them to return the ball off, off the one-yard line or out of the end zone, and they turned that down. So love the way our kickoff unit's playing, and got to give Skylar credit with that. And then Trajan Peely had a tough uh, assignment. They've got he's the guy that is really the, the cleanup or the eraser on our punt protection. And when teams bring exotic different combinations of holdups and rushes, he's the guy that's got to figure it all out and then make that kind of that last block just to get that punt clear. And I thought he did a great job of that. Defensive coordinator Elisa Tuiaki gave us his defensive player of the game, and it's one of your guys, Max Tooley, again. Yeah, yeah, we, and we've talked about Max, but uh, yeah, he's he's done a great job. Uh, He's done a great job there. I, you know, consider him a co-starter with uh, Isaiah Kalfusi, and they're both they're both playing at a high level. And uh, Max has really helped us uh, at the linebacker spot with the way that he's risen to the challenge of playing early in his career. Where's he going to stay for you moving forward as a linebacker, in, as opposed to inside out, that kind of thing? Yeah, he's. I think he's more of an outside linebacker at this point in his career. He runs. He's got a lot of speed, and so he's able to he's able to cover uh, really well on the outside. He's learned that position, and as a young player, it's hard to pick up multiple positions and, and change throughout the course of the season. I think potentially in in his future part of his career, he may have the ability to move to more of an inside linebacker. His game really, the way he approaches the game with the violence and the passion, reminds me a lot of Shoney Takitaki. Hmm. 
That's not, 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 not a bad recollection there. As we take a brief time out, we remind you that uh, for your daily Cougar Sports play-by-play, -play, it is BYU Sports Nation. Tune in weekdays at noon Eastern time. Coming up on our final segment, Coach Lamb looks ahead to Saturday's trip to Toledo and takes questions from Cougar Nation using hashtag CCBYU. You're in the Coordinator's Corner, brought to you by JCW's The Burger Boys. When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. Call it a path. Or a way through. It can be arrow straight or have twists and turns. It's life's financial journey, and Mountain America Credit Union is here to guide you every step of the way. With timely advice and affordable products, this is your journey. Let's begin together. We're Mountain America, guiding you forward. My brother is about to marry the girl who single-handedly ruined my life in high school. Nice work, Gator. You were prettier with the mask on. <laughs> this wedding is tearing our family apart. You're grounded. Go to your rooms. And the first 50 yarder in 13 plus years for BYU. The snap to Livingston low, the kick on its way. It is through for three. Jake Oldroy has BYU's first field goal of 50 plus yards since October 28, 2006. Saturday in Toledo. It is BYU's first ever visit to the Glass Bowl. BYU 2-2 two two on the year. Toledo Rockets 2-1 after a 41-35 win in Fort Collins on Saturday night. We're in our final segment now with BYU Special Teams Coordinator Ed Lamb. And uh, Coach Lamb Rockets have again spread it around in terms of who they've played. P5, FCS, and G5. A prolific run game right now. Not a lot of a pass game and don't get a lot of stops. So I'm, I don't really know where this, where this thing is going to go on Saturday. But man, they run it. 46 times they ran it in Fort Collins for an average of 9.5 yards a tote, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah, they're, <laughs> they're absolutely a fantastic run team. They have a great design, and it's really the quarterback that, that makes it. I mean, they have an NFL running back, in my opinion. He breaks tackles. He's got tremendous breakaway speed, a big offensive line. But the quarterback is so good at, at pulling the ball out when the defense overcommits to the run. He pulls the ball out. He rips an RPO. And um, and he he really makes that thing work and, work and keep the defense honest. His uh, If you took his numbers on any given game, you see he doesn't throw very much, but if you combined three games worth of numbers, he's throwing at an amazing clip, very efficient quarterback, not a lot of interceptions, a lot of touchdowns and, and uh, completions in there. Okay, 30 seconds left, so a short answer on this one from uh, at Dan Haslam on social media. Which side of the ball is BYU more concerned about versus Toledo? Oh, gosh. <laughs> There's no answer to that. Yeah, I'm going to, well, I'll just put that. all on, three and put, be good. Put that on myself you yeah. know, in, in order, is in kicking game defense and, and, and offense. I mean, that, that's the way I see it. Okay. Coach, uh, thanks for the time. We will see you in a couple weeks after the bye. Thank you. All right. That is Coach Ed Lamb. That'll do it for this week's edition of the Coordinator's Corner. With the bye week next week, we're back with you two weeks from today at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. For Special Teams Coordinator Ed Lamb and for Offensive Coordinator Jeff Rimes, I'm Greg Rubel. Thanks for joining us in the Coordinator's Corner on BYU TV. So long. Go Cougs. On the next Relative Race. What do we do? We've never had anyone do this before. Ah, we're moving, Jerrica. I want a new Toyota. I want a what? Everyone is hearing strange noises. Did you shower this week? I don't know. You're the first people I've met from my mother's side. A close connection takes Michael to new heights. 
and Precious is one step closer to finding her father. I hope I get to meet him. We're on at five, guys. Oh, let me see the top.